Are you thinking of trying resin 3D printing? Seems like there's a new printer out with like new features or better resolution or something every 30 seconds. And that can be pretty intimidating, especially to newcomers like me. I had never actually seen a resin printer with my own eyes before cracking the box open on this one that Creality sent me. So I think this is a perfect opportunity to show what it's like to get started afresh in resin printing. What extra equipment I had to buy, all of that. And also to see if this printer is a good place to start. And then I'm gonna use this printer to make something not in plastic by the end of this video. Okay, I'm not gonna go into super detail on how these things work, but in here there's a, an LCD screen that uses UV light to harden a, a goopy resin that you should totally not drink, uh, layer by layer to form a plastic part. That's all you need to know. There's also projection machines that don't use a screen. They're called DLP printers. You don't have to worry about that if you're just starting out, forget it. Now that screen is a vital part here. They generally measure it like inches diagonally and a number of pixels along the longest edge, kind of like a television. Obviously larger printers can print larger things or more small things at a time, but the resolution's kind of tricky. A small 8K printer has better resolution than a larger 8K printer because the same number of pixels on a larger screen make for larger pixels and fewer pixels per inch. That's why you generally don't see people talking about the arbitrary number before the K. They talk about microns per pixel. This is a Creality Hallet Mage 8K. It's a 10.3 inch screen measured diagonally and it, obviously it's 8K. And if you do the math, that comes into 29.7 microns per inch. A 10 inch screen also is about as big as you can go before the prices like really start going exponential and the resolution really starts tanking. So this might be about the perfect like balance of size, resolution, and cost. Setting up super easy. Resin printers come pre-built. They're like, they don't come in kits like FDM printers. So I took it out of the box and just had to set the level on the bed. And I actually didn't set the level, I checked the level. They come pre-leveled, but obviously you should like check because things ship from China, it's gonna get beat around a bit. Uh, but it was fine. Pro tip, if you take yours out of the box and it's level, make sure to tighten these four screws. I didn't and it came back to bite me. But more on that later. That vat, that's where the resin goes. This particular vat has captive screws. You can unscrew them and the screws will not come out. You can't lose them. This vat can hold a whole bottle of resin, but you gotta make sure the thing sits like level on the table or it like sloshes to one side and spills are no fun. The resin, by the way, it's sticky, it's smelly, it's also toxic. Don't drink it. Wear gloves, nitrile gloves specifically. I've heard other gloves don't always stop the resin. It can go through it. Also wear a mask because it smells terrible. It smells awfully poisonous. And ventilation is good. I have this out in my garage. I don't have it in the house. If you have this like in a house or an enclosed space, uh, you'll probably want an air extractor. And this printer has two things that help with that. This is a fan and a filter. It sucks the air in, puts it through a filter, and sends it out this nice tube in the background, which is nice. You can stick this into an air extraction setup uh, or just, you know, out a hole in the window or something. And the filter really works. I can't actually smell anything when the thing is running, unless I open this lid and that it, that it smells like resin. Oh, and this lid, it's hinged. You can just open it up and that's super awesome. Since I got this and I've been messing around with it for a while, I've tried out some other machines. And when most of them you pick the lid up, like on this thing, we'll get to that later. That's really annoying to like pick up the lid and where do you put it? Uh, and this, this is brilliant. I wish all printers and everything had one of these. If you don't believe me, try moving these things around with sticky resin covered gloves for a while and get back to me. Okay, so the things that you print are usually 3D models in the form of STL files. You can make those in a 3D modeling program or you can just download a bunch of them. There are a few generic ones you can download to, to test out settings on these machines. And that's important because each resin printer combo is gonna be a little bit different. So learn to tune the settings now when you're starting and you won't have to worry about it anymore. It'll be easy peasy. Future you will be very thankful. Anyway, you take these STL files, you put them into a program called a slicer and that gives you a file for this thing. There are a bunch of different slicers. You can use pretty much any of them for this printer. Uh, but I used Hallet Box that comes with the machine. I found that using Creality's Hallet Box slicer on the Creality printer with Creality resin, the prints came out perfect right away. The settings were perfect. Might not always be the case, but it worked for me. That was not true when I tried another company's resin. Uh, in this case, it was Soraya Tech Navy Gray. They, they were close, they were close, but the prints didn't come out perfect. So here's how you figure out the settings, okay? If it doesn't stick to the build plate, assuming it's leveled properly, raise the burn-in time exposure. If they stick to the build plate and they're welded on, you can't get them off, lower the burn-in time. Uh, to, to get the normal print times, I tried two things. I used the cones of calibration and some 3D models uh, from a company called One Page Rules. One Page Rules makes miniatures for, for tabletop war games, but the important part is the pre-supports are really good and the files are free. So if the prints fail, 
It's not the file's fault. Some people don't like the cones of calibration, but if the cones failed, the one-page rules models also failed, and if one worked, the other one also worked. I also printed the Amerilabs test town you can see here. People debate which, which of these tests is the best. You can print them all at once, so don't worry about it. This whole calibration thing seems intimidating. It's not. Just don't be scared. Give it a shot. You can figure it out. Now, this is certainly not an exhaustive explanation of how to calibrate 3D prints, but it's a good place to get started. You can really, really go into the weeds on this, uh, but honestly, you don't really have to. Okay, now your settings are good. You printed some stuff. What do you do? Well, your prints are dripping with resin. They're not fully cured. They still have supports on. They're stuck on the plate. So the cheat method, step one, take the prints, get them off the tray, and, and clean them in like a bowl or something with rubbing alcohol, you know, dunk, dunk them in there. Wear gloves, wear gloves. Then once they're clean, you got all that resin off, pull the supports off or clip them off or something. And then you take those prints, set them in the sun for a while, have a half hour or so, turn them over. Until that step, wear gloves because they're not fully cured yet. Once they're fully cured, you're good. You got a print. Now that takes a while and it's kind of time consuming. The first time I did that, I took like a, a clear plastic cup and some rubbing alcohol I stole from my wife's uh, first aid kit and you know, dunked them in. And you can't just put that alcohol back in the back in the bottle to clean your cut later on. Like that's terrible. So it was kind of a waste. It also took a while because I had to do one at a time. I tried that method at first. It's time consuming, but it's not that bad. But there is a better way. Creality also sent me this. This is their wash and cure station. You can put all the prints in the basket. It's big enough to hold anything that can print on this printer, including the print bed itself. You can take the whole print bed right off, prints and all, and stick them in the bucket, and it will clean all of them simultaneously. After washing, you take it out, scrape the prints off the bed if you haven't done that already, remove the supports like before, either by just tearing them off or by clipping them off if you want them nice and clean, and then you put them back in this machine. If you take this bucket out, and you put this down there instead, it becomes a curing station. And these are a bunch of LED lights. They will cure your prints faster than putting them out in the sun. This bucket, by the way, this is not normal rubbing alcohol. Normal rubbing alcohol is like 70% isopropyl alcohol. This is 99%. I got this at the hardware store. They sell it by the gallon. It's not super cheap, but you can use it a lot. Like you can reuse it over and over and over. This is not clear because this is multiple bottles worth of prints have been cleaned in here and I can still clean with it. Eventually you need to get rid of your alcohol, but not yet. See what I mean about the lids? After it's done curing, you have a finished part. The real time saver here is it cures in like four minutes, not an hour or whatever in the sun. And it washes everything in a couple of minutes. Everything all at once, not one at a time. You don't have to do it. You're not gonna spill this stuff all over your hands. It's way easier. And now you have a finished print. Here's one. And the detail is incredible. Like compared to FDM prints, this is just mind blowing. That's true with most resin printers though. I printed tons of these little minis. So clearly it would be a waste if I didn't try the games out, right? The printer also came with this file for this mean looking lady. And you can actually see some interesting details. Like there's a difference between the surface texture of like smooth skin and then like the fabric here and then like in like hair strands. It's pretty crazy what kind of tiny detail you can get. It's definitely far more detail than I'm gonna need for sand casting, but it's, you know, it's, it's impressive what these things can do. Even the same for like these miniatures. If I had to come up with a criticism, it's that this thing is huge. It's not as big as some of the other printers with a 10 inch screen, but it's still really big. It takes up a lot of space. It's helped a little bit by the lid, not also taking up a bunch of space, but since I got this a while back, and I've been messing with it for a long time now, uh, I've been trying out another 3D printer. It's, admittedly, it's not a 10 inch, it's a smaller screen, but the machine itself is way more compact. So screen size versus machine size, this is still kind of big. I don't care because I have a whole bunch of room here, but you might. Also, this printer in particular doesn't have a lot of the extra features that you see advertised on some other printers. It's not super fast. It doesn't have a camera. There's no Wi-Fi connectivity and a whole bunch of other things that I wouldn't care to pay for anyway. So if you want some of those features, there are other models of printers that have those. This just has the, the parts you need to print stuff. I've also had two print failures with this, only two. The first one was because I tried using more, like almost two years expired resin. Resin has a shelf life. And I was like, triple the shelf life, because someone just gave me the bottle, like, here, try this. It didn't work. Uh, turns out that exp expiration date kind of matters. Maybe you can fudge it a month or two, but not a couple years. The second print problem I had was when these screws, remember I said I didn't tighten them at first? Yeah, they allowed the bed to get a little wonky when printing some of this stuff that we'll look at later. And uh, a bunch of the prints failed. Some of them didn't though. They still, they still finished, those worked. 
Okay, I would be remiss if I didn't melt something today. So I printed another sign, kind of like this one. If you don't know me and you're just here to learn about 3D printers, I tend to make stuff out of like metal and wood. And to me, 3D printers are just a tool to that end, a miracle tool, but they're not the main focus. I do use them in like every project though. Huh. Anyway, the pattern for this was FDM printed. So I went and took the file, changed the text, printed it out in resin, you know, at a slight angle for some reason, someone told me to do that. And I got this. The print isn't exactly flat and it isn't exactly square, but that might have to do with orientation. I also printed the tapered sprue former, a new core box for making the, the pouring basin and some runner formers and stuff like I had previously in FDM printing. Now the orientation is kind of important. I printed multiple of these identical files, but in different orientations and locations. And only one of them printed with a flat surface here and that hole the correct size. So that's something you might want to mess with. It wasn't that hard. After three tries, I had it. The last sign, the pattern was FDM printed and that warped a bit too. Not quite like this one, but at least the sides were straight. Oh, and if you're wondering who Cone is, check out the channel Cone Dodger 240. He does car stuff in a garage. If you like old Japanese cars, and I love old Japanese cars, check it out. I won't go through the whole process because it's basically identical to how I made this one. And there's a whole video on that. Go check that out if you feel like it. This one is cast in ZA-12, a zinc alloy, because I ran out of tin to make the bronze. And that's a good thing too, because old Butterfingers here dumped the crucible all over the place. And thousand degree zinc will definitely burn you, but 2000 degree bronze will destroy everything. Somehow, the casting turned out. This one got a painted background and a polished raised section and the benefits of resin printing really showed through. I did no sanding on this pattern, no gap filling. It pulled from the sand easier because there were no layer lines, which means cleaner edges on the letters. It, it just looks really nice. The FDM print was probably cheaper, the filament's cheaper, but this saved me a lot of time and effort. And the casting looks better too. Now I kind of want to redo mine. I'll put links to this printer and wash and cure station down below. I had a really easy time getting it set up and getting going. It was no hassle at all. Now that 12K printers are hitting the market, these 8K ones are going super cheap. So you might be able to get a screaming deal. This printer, this wash and cure station, the resin, all the alcohol that went into this, the gloves, the paper towels, get paper towels. Uh, all combined cost less than that Prusa Mark III I showed in the last video. Definitely not as expensive as you think. 